special request. Please pray in your hearts. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst so that we can understand God's word. There is no other way. Amen. Only by the work of the Holy Spirit can we have our hearts open and understand his words. Brethren, the message for today is based on Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. What does God require? Perfection. Nothing less than perfection. But if we would be perfect, we must put no confidence in self. Daily, we must know and understand that self is not to be trusted. Amen. We need to grasp God's promise with firm, firm faith. We need to ask for the Holy Spirit with a full realization of our own helplessness. Then when the Holy Spirit works, we shall not give self the glory. The Holy Spirit will graciously take the heart into his keeping, bringing to it all the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness. We shall be kept by the power of God through faith. Brethren, I must confess to you that uh, for many years this Bible verse Matthew 5:48 was a terror to me. <laughs> and I believe that uh, it is still a terror for many people. What was the reason? I was trying to be perfect by myself, to be accepted by the Lord. And it was a terrible frustration. Not only one day, two days, it was years, brethren. I was trying to reach perfection by myself. Finally, we found a solution for that problem. Now, let's consider why does the Lord demand perfection? Why? He is perfect. And he, uh, his desire is that we should be with him forever. And if we are not perfect, and he is perfect, we cannot be together. Now, another question, can we be perfect? By ourselves, no. But by God's grace, yes. When? Every day. Because there are people who are waiting for the end of life. When I was, when I'll be in the deathbed, then I'll be perfect. And there is some theological ideas about that. After suffering, after taking a difficult life, then we'll be perfect. But let us, brethren, let us consider some wonderful quotation from the Bible, Spirit of Prophecy, about perfection. And I hope that we, that this a little bit complex subject will be clear for us by God's grace. Let's consider first that God is perfect. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. And 2 Samuel 22 says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? God is my strength and power. And he makes my way perfect. How about those who follow him? Psalm 37 says, Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, 
for the end of that man is peace. Then the Bible says that about uh, perfect people. Now we should understand what the meaning of this word perfect. Brethren, always when we try to find the perfection ourselves, what the result? Frustration. Frustration. Mm -hmm. Disappointment. Mm -hmm. Discouragement. But how can we be perfect? Uh, there are some Bible verses that, that says that uh, as we contemplate one who is perfect, we are changed. <coughs> according to his image. But the problem is that we should be perfect today. What's the meaning of this word perfect in our case? Now I fear. Uh, but there is a very interesting verse here talking about Lucifer. The Bible says that Lucifer was perfect. Till when he became imperfect. Let us read here Ezekiel 28, verse 15. He was perfect in God's sight. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Then, brother, we have a clue here. When we become, when we become perfect and when we are imperfect before the Lord. Let us make clear. All of us here, we are sinners. We are sinners. Brother, and we should understand that we are chief sinners. Chief sinners. Okay? Because if you don't recognize our sinfulness, we cannot be saved. Amen. That's one condition, essential condition. Then it's, it, uh, it's clear, according to this verse of Ezekiel 28, that uh, Lucifer was perfect. Till iniquity was found in him. Then he became perfect. Then according to this verse, when we are perfect, When we have no sin. But we are sinners. That's our problem. We are sinners. And we are, we are considered perfect by the Lord when we have no sin. <coughs> uh, in other words, when we are not living in sin. Because the Bible says that all of us, we commit sin. But there is another wonderful verse. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our, confess our sins, he is righteous. merciful and righteous yeah. to forgive, forgive our sins and cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. Right. Then, Brad, what happens when we recognize our sins, we confess them, what the provision, divine provision for that? When we confess our sins, we are transferring our sins to, to Christ in the sanctuary. And Christ forgives us and cleanses us. What's our condition now? Perfect. Perfect. Ah, brother, but does this mean that we, f we find perfection ourselves? No. The moment that we take our eyes from Christ and we see to ourselves, we look to ourselves, yeah. we are in sin. We are in sin. Uh, do you remember the experience of Peter when he was walking under the waters? When he was walking on the, on, on the waters? He was looking to Christ. The moment that he, he felt, oh, I'm much more important than my fellow workers. And he looked to them, proud. That was the immediate result. Thank Then, brethren, we can be perfect now. We can be perfect today as we contemplate 
we look to Christ. He forgives us and he cleanses. <coughs> About uh, Abraham, when we study the life of Abraham and Noah and other God servant, we can, we can have a more clear understanding about perfection. In Genesis 17, verse 1, it says, When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, should we reach 99 years to be perfect? No. But when he was that age, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. God, Walk before me and be thou perfect. Brethren, here we have another clue. How can we be per perfect? Walking before the Lord. It, it is not the other way around. It's, some people they think this way. I need to be perfect to walk before the Lord. But I understand the opposite way. We need to walk before the Lord in order to be perfect. I always remember the experience of the disciples. Do you remember the main problem that they used to discuss in their committees? Who is? The greatest, who is the greatest? But they didn't dare to discuss that point before the, the chairman. When they decide to discuss about who was, would be the greatest, they take another decision before. <laughs> what did they used to do? They should keep themselves away from Christ to discuss who would be the greatest. But Christ was following the situation, and he asked them, what are you discussing now? Then they were ashamed. They would avoid to say that, because they were discussing who would be the greatest. But they could not discuss this point about human greatness in the presence of Christ. Brethren, when we are walking before the Lord, it is impossible to commit sin. Do you agree? Then what's, what's the key to be perfect? Walking before the Lord. Now, another question, how can, how can we walk before the Lord? There is some divine provision for that. When we are meditating upon God's word, are we walking before the Lord? Mm -hmm. Yes. When we are praying, when we are open our hearts before the Lord, confess our sins, asking for help, for grace, are we walking before the Lord? Yes. When we are talking about God's love to others, are we walking before the Lord? Yes. yes. Then there is many provisions, divine provision, so that we can be perfect. The, on daily basis, uh, the Apostle Paul used to say, I die daily. Then when we die daily, our self is put aside and Christ is revealed. Then we have perfection, Christian perfection. When we see that we are perfect, we are in danger. Mm -hmm. But how about when God says that we are perfect? Do you remember a man about whom Christ said that he's a perfect man? Do you remember? Job? Job. Chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and stood evil. Who said that? God himself. God himself. That's wonderful. 
Because if I say to you that I'm perfect, you, you cannot believe. But if God says that his children are perfect, that's true. If they are not, they, by God's word, they become. Okay? Because God's word has power to change ourselves. We have a very interesting experience, very known also, in Matthew, 9, Matthew 19. Let's consider Brad, this experience. 19, 16 to 21. You know, uh, the Bible says that God's word is new every morning. Many Bible verses that we used to read for many times, they become more and more clear every day. And uh, we read this way. Matthew 19. Uh, Sister Susie, could you read, please? Matthew 19, 16 to 21. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do, that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is not good but one, that is, God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What, what lack I yet? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. Brethren, here we have the perfect description of the condition of eternal life. Perfect. First, that man, he was a Jew. He used to keep the law, at least the letter of the law. And he presented to Christ a, a vital question. A vital question. That the reason why we are here. Our goal is eternal life. And he made, he presented this question, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Christ summarized the, the answer in one word, one phrase. What's the condition? Keep the commandment. Why? God is perfect. His law is perfect. So that uh, if I can, if I need to be perfect, I, I need to, be, to live in harmony with the law. But when Christ said that to the young man, he said, oh, but that's, that's not new for me. I have kept the commandments since I was a young man. Do you have something else? He said, he, I would think that Christ had some more commandments, other commandments to present to him. Then Christ touched his weak point. What was the weak point of that man? He was? What was his idol? What is his God? Money. Money. Dollar. Dollar was his, his God. Shekel. <laughs> but he said that he used to keep the commandment. He was lying. When he said that, he was break the commandment. Because he was not the commandment keeper. Then when Christ touched the weakest point, then, well, if you want to keep commandment, if you want to be perfect, in other words, then give up your idol. Renounce your idol. Sell your property and give to the poor the proceeds. What was the result? But, brother, Christ said something else here. If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and what else? And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Stop here? No. no. Come and follow me. How can we be perfect? Following Christ. We cannot keep command any commandment at all. 
if you don't follow Christ. Because, because Christ is the practical demonstration of God's law. If you, if, if you want to know God's law in reality, we need to know Christ. Just to memorize Ten Commandments is not enough. Just to memorize the Bible is not enough. If you want to be perfect, if you want to be commandment keepers, we need to follow Christ. We need to accept Christ as our Savior, and we need to accept Christ as our Lord. We need to submit our will to Christ's will. Now, how about God's people? Uh, Luke 6.40 The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. <coughs> then, Brad, what is the criteria for our perfection? Like Jesus. There is another trap here. Someone said, Christ is perfect, and I will try to copy him. Then I will be perfect like him. Can you do that? No, I cannot copy. We receive perfection through relationship to communion. As we walk with Christ, we assimilate his character, his perfection. John 17, 23. Brethren, here is a, a more detailed instruction about uh, how we can be perfect. Brothers, could you read? Uh, John 17, 23. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Look, brethren, I in them. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Then we cannot be perfect without Christ. And we cannot be perfect just thinking about Christ. We need to, to be in Christ, and we need to have Christ in us so that we can be perfect. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Sister Basimore, could you read, please? Romans 12, verse 2. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, what, what is that good and acceptable and perfect with the will of God. There is an interesting word here. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed. Not conformed, but transformed. By the renew of our mind. Brethren, here resides everything. We can be outwardly perfect. It's not enough. Perfection should be in our mind. Second Corinthians thirteen eleven. Sister Lisa. Second Corinthians thirteen eleven. Be of good comfort, be of one mind, 
Live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. What is the result of perfection, Christian perfection? We should be united, one mind. Brethren, there is a logical thought here. If each one of us here, we are guided by the same Holy Spirit, what would be the result? Unity. Unity. <coughs> when we are pushing to one direction or to another direction, we are not, we are not guided by the same Spirit. There are different spirits working. And Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Just have a link, could you read, please? Thirteen and 14. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Thank you. But do you realize that there is a connection between perfection and maturity? Christian maturity. Because Paul says, till we all come to the unity of the faith, and the knowledge of the Son of God unto perfect man. And verse 14, he says, that we henceforth be no more children. Then in the Bible, perfection is synonymous of maturity, spiritual maturity. It uh, doesn't mean that uh, we reach absolute perfection. Because when we read about uh, Abraham, Noah, they commit mistakes, mm -hmm. even though the Lord considered them, them perfect. For instance, after Noah was declared perfect before the Lord, you remember what happened? He got drunken. Yeah, after the flood. Yes. After, yes. Then uh, he was, uh, the Bible says that he was perfect. Mm -hmm. Genesis 6 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect. perfect in his generation. But after that, he committed mistakes. Then, but don't be discouraged. We can be perfect before the Lord, but in one moment that we neglect our communion with the Lord, we commit mistakes. Even we can commit sin. But then what is, should be our attitude immediately? We should flee to Christ, confess our sins, and he forgives and cleanses. Amen. Now, uh, there is a, another essential verse here. Let us read about the experience of Paul. And the spirit of prophecy says that after Christ, Paul was the, the best teacher in the world after Christ. Christ was first, second Paul. But what uh, Paul himself tells about himself? Uh, let us read uh, Philippians chapter 3. We know that he was a very learned man, very prepared man for the work he was a polyglot, we say. He knew philosophy, logical, and uh, laws. And he said, What things, let us read the verses 7 to 9. What things were gain to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung. But that's a, a kind of heavy word. That was the way as Paul compared his own righteousness. Yes? Dung. 
that I may win Christ. And what was his hope about the judgment? He said, and be found in him. Brethren, can we be present in the judgment in heaven by ourselves? No at all, not at all. And Paul said, and be found in him. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now let us read verses 12 to 16. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. Brother, what is the word of those who are really perfect before the Lord? What, what, do, what do they say about themselves? They never claim that. They never claim that. Because uh, if we know Christ, we know ourselves. <laughs> then we, we can be very happy about Christ, but when we think about ourselves, we are disappointed. Amen. Then our only hope is trusting in Christ, now and ever. ever. <clears throat> I repeat, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of, of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, do we need to do that? Yes. Oh yes, brethren, I need to do that. If I don't forget my past, I will not be happy. Amen. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the prize for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, nevertheless, whether to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. What did Paul say about himself? His only hope was being perfect in, in Jesus Christ. But he said, I, I cannot declare that I already reached the goal. I'm striving. <laughs> then, brethren, while we are still alive, we have a, a battle. Amen. Now, in Colossians 1.28... He says, whom we preach, whom? Christ. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Brethren, there is no other way. If we try to present ourselves before the Lord perfect without Christ, we are foolish. We are fool. The only way we can be presented to the Lord perfect is through Christ. In 2 Timothy 3.17, it says that the man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Uh, in order to save us, Christ had to develop a perfect character. Do you agree with that? Christ could not be our savior without perfect character. 
because uh, Christ as God, he was perfect. But he came to save us, and he had to develop a perfect character. Otherwise, he, he could not be our ransom. He could not pay the price. Then before dying on the cross, Christ should be perfect in his life. And how did he reach that goal? Let's read Hebrews chapter 2, 9 to 11. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, Brethren, if we closely follow Christ, if we are, are always living in communion with Christ, what will be the result? We will reflect his character. And it says, for which cause he is not ashamed to, cause them, to call them brethren. Amen. Now, 5 verse 9 in Hebrew says, and Christ being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto whom? Whom? All them that obey him. There is a, another wonderful verse here, Hebrews 10, 14. Let us meditate on this verse, brothers. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Brethren, uh, I would like to read again this Bible verse. We should grasp the deep meaning of this verse. By one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Brethren, when we accept Christ as our Savior, we are declared perfect by justification. And through the work of sanctification, we are perfecting our character. Then, through justification and sanctification, we are perfect before the Lord on a daily basis. But our character is not complete. That is uh, why the spirit of prophecy says that, that, says that the sanctification is a work of life. life. Then I need Christ yesterday, I need Christ today, I, I need him tomorrow. Till the end. Till the end. Uh, Peter says, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, it shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Precious assurance. Glorious is the hope before the believer as he advances by faith toward the heights of Christian perfection. Then, brother, we understand that there are different, uh, uh, the sanctification is a progressive life. Then, we can, by God's grace, we can reach the highest of Christian perfection. 
No, but there is some hindrance. I would like to mention here, in summary, that is that there are some serious hindrance for our perfection. It says in Child Guidance 466, it says, purity of life and a character molded after divine pattern are not obtained without earnest effort and fixed principles. A vacillating person will not succeed in attaining Christian perfection. If you are always doubting, vacillating, you cannot reach the perfection. We should overcome our this, this defect of character. The only safety for the youth is in this age of pollution is to make God their trust. Without divine help, they will not be able to control human passion and appetites. Brad, do you realize that many times in the spirit of prophecy, these two words are mentioned, appetites and passions, appetites and passions. Can we be perfect if we live under control of appetite or passion? No. No. We should overcome. Not we should, but I would say we must. <laughs> we must overcome. Otherwise, we'll be lost. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. Again, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Then we cannot be controlled by our body. Our body should be under control of a conscience guided by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I will summarize here, brethren, in one quotation in Christian Temperance. It says, it is impossible for those who give you the reins to appetite to attain Christian perfection. Brethren, if we are controlled by appetite or passion, we cannot be perfect. But praise the Lord that He gives us power to, to overcome. If you make God your strength, you may under the most discouraging circumstance, attain a height and breadth of Christian perfection, which you hardly think is possible to reach. Your thoughts may be elevated. You may, be, may have noble aspirations, clear perception of truth and purpose of action, which shall raise you above all sordid motives. Another point, brethren, uh, that's another vital point. No man, woman, or youth can attain to Christian perfection and neglect the study of the Word of God. That's vital, brethren, because God's Word, under the guide of the Holy Spirit, has power to change our character, to destroy our sinful tendencies. Then we cannot reach perfect, Christian perfection without God's word. Our work is to strive to attain in our sphere of action the perfection that Christ in his life on the earth attained in every phase of character. Let us make God's holy word our study Bring its holy principles into our lives. Let us walk before God in meekness and humility, daily correcting our faults. Let us not by selfish pride separate the soul from God. Cherish not a feeling of lofty supremacy. Think yourselves better, better than others. These are some hindrances. The work of transformation from unholiness to holiness is a continuous one. That's why a battle for life. Christian perfection alone 
will win the spotless robes of character, which will entitle you to stand before the throne of God among the blood-washed throng, bearing the palm branch of everlasting victory and eternal triumph. And brother, what will be the result in our church when we reach this Christian perfection? Unity is the sure result of Christian perfection. Unity. Now, there is a, here a wonderful quotation from Select Message, Volume 2. It says, We cannot claim perfection of the flesh. Why we cannot claim perfection of the flesh? We may have Christian perfection of the soul. Now, Brad, look at uh, how the Spirit of Prophecy finished this quotation. Our dependence is not in what men can do. It is in what God can do for men through Christ. When we surrender ourselves wholly to God and fully believe, the blood of Christ cleanses from all sin. Thank God that we are not dealing with impossibilities. We may claim sanctification. We may enjoy the favor of God. We are not to be anxious about what Christ and God think of us, but about what God thinks of Christ, our substitute. We are accepting the beloved. The Lord shows to the repenting, believing one that Christ accepts the surrender of the soul to be molded and fashioned after his own likeness of character. You cannot attain to Christian perfection unless you possess perfect control of your own spirit. That's another index. If I cannot control my spirit, then I'm, I'm not perfect. By the sacrifice of Christ, every provision has been made for believers to receive all things that pertain to life and godliness. The perfection of his character makes it possible for us to gain perfection. Through faith in Christ, we may reach the highest standard in Christian perfection. Christ's obedience to his Father's commandment is to be the measure of our obedience. Those who follow Christ, if they would become complete in him, must keep their will surrendered to the will of God. And what is Christianity? Uh, always when we read about religion, they say that uh, we have one billion of Christians in the world. One billion. But what's Christianity? Christianity means entire surrender to the will of God. Then it can be said of us, we are complete in Him. When we are complete in Christ? When we entirely surrender ourselves to, to Him. Christ is per Christian perfect consists in the complete harmony of our will with the will of our Creator. Through the righteousness of Christ, our substitute and surety, our obedience to God's commandment is made acceptable. And the last quotation here, brethren, that's very comforting. Man's obedience can be made perfect only by the incense of Christ's righteousness, which fills with divine fragrance every act of obedience. The part of the Christian is to persevere in overcoming every fault. Constantly, he is to pray to the Savior to heal 
the disorders of his sin-sick soul. He has not the wisdom or the strength to overcome. These belong to the Lord, and he bestows them on those who, in humiliation and contrition, seek him for help. Only way, brethren. Uh, brethren, another Bible verse that I'd like to quote before finishing is Philippians 1.6. Uh, who would like to read this verse? That's the one of my, my favorite Bible verse. Philippians 1.6. A volunteer, please. Being confident of this very thing, that we which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. What's the wonderful promise here, brethren? He which has begun the work, the good work in us, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Under the condition that we remain him till the end. May the Lord help us, brethren, to have a victorious experience with Christ. Amen. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus our Savior, we come before thee with thankful hearts for all the provision that you have made for thy children, so that we can, by God's grace, reach perfection of character. We praise the Lord for Christ, who gave us a perfect example and not only that, he gave us power to overcome our, our defect of character and to reflect his perfect righteousness. We ask forgiveness, Lord, for our defect of character and help us to walk in thy ways. And help us to surrender ourselves completely to do thy will. Bless thy people here, every one of us here, our families, and thy people everywhere in the world. Help us, Lord, to follow by faith Christ while he is interceding for us, presenting his perfect sacrifice, his perfect righteousness in our behalf in the sanctuary. Help us, Lord, to, to be in close communion with thee every day. Help us to reflect your character and give us love. Help us to love thee with our hearts, and help to love our, our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Give us the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and help us to do thy work according to thy will, and help us to be ready for the coming of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.